Hi there folks, I'm just wanting to put out a wee video that is a tribute to, in my opinion, one of the greatest sportsmen in the history of sport. Uh, I know this is more a rugby channel, but I'm wanting to talk about Roger Federer. Roger Federer, of course, recently announced that he will be retiring after the Labour Cup in London later this month, having been out of... Um, playing professional tennis for over a year um, after he's been struggling with his knees. He's had up to four surgery surgery on his knee, I believe, and um, he's just uh, at the point now where he believes his body is telling him that enough is enough at the top of professional tennis. And I think we can all say that um, we knew this day was coming. One day soon, we just... Um, I think most of us were hoping that he would get to Wimbledon next year and at least uh, play there before calling it a day, but his body is telling him other things. So I'm just wanting to say thank you to Roger Federer for everything you've given, not just for tennis, but for sport. You're an inspiration to me personally, with not just how you play the game of tennis, but also uh, your character on and off the, the court, how you handled yourself winning or losing. Um, and just the way your all-round personality shone through uh, to, e to everyone, even if um, they didn't know you personally. You, you just came across as just such a, a genuine guy, such a gentleman, um, and you handled yourself just probably like up there, the best um, demeanours well, uh, you know, we could ever see on um, a tennis court. And... Of course, um, great uh, your great rival, uh, Rafa Nadal, also um, you know a gentleman on and off the court, um, paid a really beautiful tribute to you, um, as did Novak Djokovic, um, and these three players. I think it will be a long, long, long while, possibly never, until we actually see three players of such a caliber dominate a generation as those three have done in the last nearly twenty years. Uh, it's quite something that. Um, since Roger Federer won his first Wimbledon in 2003, that only four um, major championships going into a quarter-final have not had a Federer, Nadal or a Djokovic in them. Uh, and it's quite, it's quite a remarkable uh, statistic, that. Um, so, yeah, it just shows how dominant we are. But Roger Federer himself, the tennis player... Um, just the way he played, the way he moved around the court, his shot making, his forehand, in my opinion, is the best shot uh, in tennis ever. Um, maybe possibly aside from Rafa Nadal on clay with his forehand on clay, but um, yeah, just the way Roger Federer played the game, his you know attacking game, the variety he played with, his ability to turn defense into attack with a simple flick of the wrist, both on the forehand and the backhand side, and the way he just um, you know, carried himself, especially on grass. And um, he won the most Wimbledon's ever. Uh, and the way he played at w Wimbledon, which was almost like it seemed like a second home to him at times, especially in the area where he was so dominant from uh, 2003 uh, up to about 2010, um, where he just um, almost could seem like he could do no wrong at Wimbledon. He was just so effortless across a grass court. Um, of course, I know Rafa Nadal broke his uh, stride during that time in that classic 2008 fi final, which, uh, in my opinion, is the best tennis match um, we will ever see, e ever. Um, it's just a fantastic match. And whether Roger Federer is the greatest player of all time and comparing them to Rafa Nadal and Novak Djokovic, it's a debate that's fun to have, but I don't look at it like that anymore uh, because all three of those players they play with completely different styles but for me Roger Federer is the most natural tennis player to have ever stepped onto a tennis court and um, just you know I, I mean and he's like a, just a pure natural tennis player like he was born to play tennis and of course he's put a, he put a lot of work in and his longevity um, for what it was was absolutely fantastic winning his last Grand Slam title at the age of 36 um, so he needs to be commended for that and I think um, he's still got uh, things to offer tennis what what that will be in future is obviously up to him um, I know he, he'd probably want to spend some time with his family and um, get stuff 
um, in order there. I know he's, you know, he said he he's enjoys spending more time with his family lately, and I think he'll be wanting to spend a bit more time with them. Whether he gets into a coaching capacity or goes into broadcasting or somewhere else in tennis, um, I still think, you know, will remains to be seen. But um, on I think um he says himself in his retirement speech that he's not done with tennis. He's going to continue playing and. And yeah, um, I can absolutely see that see that happening because he just, it's just again not just the fact he's a natural tennis player. It's just you could tell he absolutely enjoyed just you know picking up a racket, you know, and hitting hitting balls across the court, um, whatever he was doing, and just and just uh, someone who just enjoys tennis and enjoys playing the game as well as being the successful tennis player that he was. Um, we'll all miss him uh, from the um, high level of tennis and. I think, but I mean, his um, his uh, legacy will never be forgotten. Uh, one of the greatest players of all time, and I salute salute him uh, for everything he's brought to tennis. And I wish him and his family well going forward. And whatever he decides to do next, I'm sure he'll be a success at it. Thank you for everything, Roger.